but just to let you know the reality that nothing is difficult until you create that difficulty in your mind. And so the challenges that you confront, the difficulties that you confront, as you apply to that university and you are not admitted, it is not the end of the world and it's not a reason to walk away. Mm -hmm. It is the reason to, first of all, do an introspection and come to a conclusion that you probably, do, you probably did something wrong. And so you can do better and just put yourself together and do it. If you want to be a lawyer, you can be a lawyer in spite of the challenges that are happening. And students who have come to my office and complained about challenges and difficulties and the examination uncertainties and all these complaints about the structures that have been put in place on legal education. And I tell them, if they admitted three people, those three people have two legs, they have two eyes, they have the same body, they're not different, they're not special. What it means is that if there are challenges and they're going to admit even very limited number, count yourself among the limited number. So you limit yourself, and we limit ourselves. We are trained and we are cultured in this country to learn to be timid. And that timidity has become a vice. Mm. We call it humility. We actually put a prize on timidity in the name of humility. It's not. Mm. There's a distinction between being timid and being humble. Okay. There's a distinction between being proud and being confident. Unfortunately, we have confused them. And we have deliberately bastardized people and suppressed people using the wrong words just to keep them out of the limelight or to keep them out of achieving their life's dreams. Mm. So you allow people to keep you down. I have grown up with my own life challenges. I have not l allowed some of those challenges to keep me down. Mm. People will keep you down. People will say things about you. And people will dismiss you. But let sometimes the the negativities and the obstacles and the difficulties of life actually precisely be your inspiration. Mm. Because if you would do things precisely for those who said you can't, that can in itself become a motivation. I've told, students, I've told students many times that sometimes the best motivations are the negative ones. And the negative ones are the ones that say, I'll do it because he said I can't. You know, it's, it sounds negative because it shouldn't be. You should have a positive motivation. But negative motivations are great as well. In other words, people tell you you can't. And you have to make sure you do exactly the opposite of what they're telling you you can't. And so the people who sometimes are your naysayers, they are sometimes your greatest motivation. And so let's look on the positive side of things. And I think that anybody who has an ambition set on his heart, the mere fact that you can dream should tell you that you can do it. But the obstacles are also there. And it's imperative that you are mindful of them. Dismissing the obstacles can be a, a mistake because what you do is that then you don't size them properly, then you don't pay attention to them, and then you don't craft responses to them. Mm. 